I've been here since 1997 and I have seen um, this area change dramatically over the last 20 plus years. I'm a native of Greenville so I grew up here and went to the private and public schools of Greenville County and I've seen how even through education, health, and even in collaborations how things have changed, the landscapes have changed, neighborhoods have changed, uh, people have changed, organizations have changed, um, and we have seen what community really truly looks like. Greenville has been willing to broaden its definition of health to include things like transportation, like housing security, like a living wage, like racism, and marginalized communities to really see how all of these things intersect and create our quality of life. Thousands of people ride Greenlink Greenville County South Carolina's public transit system every day. Greenlink operates 11 fixed bus routes on a one hour frequency Monday to Friday 5.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Saturday 8.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m and with no service on Sundays. The lack of frequency and hours makes it difficult for riders to efficiently reach work, school, healthcare, and worship. Greenlink has created a transportation development plan to address the riders' requests for more frequent buses, longer hours, and Sunday service. We've seen a big change since the community started growing in the early 2000s. We've seen a big change in, in the way the needs have evolved for the community. So at the very beginning, um, it was maybe uh, more overwhelming for some of the nonprofit and public agencies in Greenville to try to serve this community because the community was very, very new. We don't have, um, you know, out west, if you go to California or Texas or New York, you have established communities of second, third, fourth generation Hispanic people, people who are bilingual. And in Greenville, that was in the case and so you had um, public agencies that wanted to serve the community but there was a language barrier a huge cultural cultural barrier and then you also had uh, legal issues there part of our role in the community um, as a as a part as a group that brings um, nonprofits together and organizations together is, is helping those organizations establish trust so again we're a small team so a lot of times we're kind of incubating some of these projects with other organizations and helping them establish trust so that when people see um, the name you know um, Greenville County Library or Live Well or United Way or Vida, they, they, they've already, we were kind of that bridge that helped them connect with those services. But after a few years, we can kind of back off. Once that organization or that service has a bilingual staff or a bilingual volunteer, and those, are, those individuals are used to going there, the Hispanic Alliance can step away and help another nonprofit, help another organization. So that's something that's really special about us, that we can help other nonprofits build trust to, to try to, um, eliminate the barriers that people have to access these services. A long time ago people were, were a little more standoffish or scared of accessing certain services or going to certain places because they didn't feel like they belong there. I, I felt that way when I moved here in, in 1999 um, and it's it's a tough feeling to feel like you, you used to belong, you used to be at home and all of a sudden you were uprooted and now you're somewhere else and at the beginning you, your circle is very small, you know, maybe your home, if you find a church, maybe your church um, and then your circle starts growing. So it's Wonderful philanthropic organizations. I'm here locally, statewide, and even nationally. Those funds are utilized to not only jumpstart programs or make investments in our community, they're also used for leverage in order that we can draw down other dollars from other um, philanthropic or even federal or state agencies in order to make those dollars spread. 